Welcome to Astronomy Daily, your source for the latest space and astronomy news. I'm your host, Anna, and today we have a packed episode covering exciting developments from NASA's Voyager mission to solar flares and lunar rovers. We'll be exploring some fascinating stories from across the cosmos, so let's dive right in. In a bittersweet moment for space exploration, NASA has made the difficult decision to power down the plasma science instrument aboard Voyager 2. This move comes as the spacecraft, now over 12.8 billion miles from Earth, faces a gradually diminishing power supply. The Voyager probes have been our pioneers in interstellar space, providing unique data that no other human-made spacecraft has ever collected. The plasma science instrument, which measures electrically charged atoms and their flow, has been crucial in understanding the boundary between our solar system and interstellar space. But don't worry, space enthusiasts, this isn't the end for Voyager 2. The spacecraft still has four other science instruments actively studying the region beyond our heliosphere. NASA expects that with careful power management, Voyager 2 could continue its groundbreaking exploration well into the 2030s. This strategic shutdown is part of NASA's ongoing efforts to extend the life of both Voyager probes. As these venerable spacecraft, powered by decaying plutonium, lose about four watts of power each year, mission engineers have had to make tough choices about which systems to prioritize. While it's sad to see any instrument go offline, it's truly remarkable that these spacecraft, launched in the 1970s, are still operating and sending back valuable scientific data from the very edge of our solar neighborhood. The Voyager mission continues to push the boundaries of human exploration giving us unprecedented insights into the nature of our cosmic home and the vast, mysterious realm that lies beyond. Next up, the sun certainly made its presence known as we entered October, unleashing two powerful flares in just over 24 hours. The most impressive was an X7.1 class flare, the second strongest of the current solar cycle. This monster eruption peaked on October 1st at 6.20 p.m. Eastern Time. To put this in perspective, X-class flares are the most powerful category, and this one was a whopper, even by those standards. It likely caused widespread disruptions to high-frequency radio communications across the Western Hemisphere, Pacific, and parts of Asia. But that's not all. The flare was accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, or CME, headed straight for Earth. When it arrives, we could be in for a significant geomagnetic storm. While this might cause some headaches for satellite operators and power grid managers, it's great news for Aurora watchers. Keep your eyes on the night sky this weekend for potentially spectacular northern and southern lights. This intense solar activity is a clear sign that we're approaching the peak of the current solar cycle. As we move deeper into solar cycle 25, we can expect more frequent and powerful eruptions from our star. It's an exciting time for solar physicists and space weather forecasters, We'll be keeping a close eye on the sun's temper in the coming months. Speaking of sights in our skies, on Wednesday, sky watchers in select locations were treated to a spectacular celestial show as an annular solar eclipse transformed the sun into a mesmerizing ring of fire in the sky. This rare event was visible across parts of the Pacific Ocean, including Hawaii, as well as southern Chile and Argentina. Eclipse chasers flocked to prime viewing locations, with remote Easter Island being one of the most sought-after spots. Despite the threat of clouds, excitement remained high among the gathered crowds. Jamie Carter, a UK-based science journalist, described the experience as incredible, with tense moments as clouds parted just in time for the main event. Astrophotographer Josh Drury, who watched the eclipse near Easter Island's iconic Moai statues, called it a lifelong ambition nearly complete. He noted the rarity of such an event, stating it would be another 312 years before the island sees another like it. For those unable to witness the annular eclipse in person, partial views were visible to over 240 million people outside the path of annularity. Looking ahead, mark your calendars for the next total solar eclipse, set to cross North America on April 8, 2024, promising another awe-inspiring display for sky enthusiasts. Next up, let's look towards the future. NASA is making significant strides in preparing for future lunar exploration as part of the Artemis missions. A key component of these missions will be the Lunar Terrain Vehicle, or LTV, an unpressurized rover that will allow astronauts to cover more ground and conduct more extensive scientific research on the moon's surface. At Johnson Space Center in Houston, engineers are hard at work developing a prototype called the Ground Test Unit, or GTU. 
This earthbound version of the lunar rover will play a crucial role in testing and evaluating various concepts before the final LTV is sent to the moon. The GTU will serve as an engineering testbed, allowing NASA to examine important aspects such as crew compartment design, rover maintenance procedures, and the integration of scientific payloads. This prototype testing is essential for NASA to be a smart buyer, as they work with contracted companies to refine the LTV design. Speaking of contracts, NASA has selected three companies, Intuitive Machines, Lunar Outpost, and Venturi Astrolab, to supply rover technologies for future Artemis missions. The GTU will help both NASA and these contractors fine-tune their designs, ensuring that the final LTV meets all necessary requirements for lunar operations. By conducting thorough testing with the GTU here on Earth, NASA aims to mitigate risks and ensure that astronauts can work safely and productively on the lunar surface. This careful preparation is not just about returning to the moon. It's laying the groundwork for eventual crewed missions to Mars. Meanwhile, the excitement is building as United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur rocket gears up for its second ever liftoff, scheduled for this Friday. This test flight, dubbed CERT-2, is a crucial step toward certifying the rocket for use by the U.S. Space Force. ULA recently conducted a launch readiness review, giving the green light for the mission. The rocket has already been rolled out to the launch pad at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, where it successfully completed a wet dress rehearsal. While the Vulcan Centaur's debut flight in January was nearly flawless, this second mission carries no paying customer. Instead, it will fly with a mass simulator and additional instrumentation to thoroughly assess the rocket's performance. If all goes well with CERT-2 and subsequent data reviews, the Vulcan Centaur could begin flying national security missions for the Space Force as early as the end of this year. ULA has ambitious plans for 2025, aiming to launch 20 missions split between the Vulcan Centaur and the Atlas V rocket it's designed to replace. This test flight marks another important milestone in the evolution of ULA's launch capabilities, paving the way for both government and commercial missions in the near future. Finally today, a story of particular interest to our Australian listeners. The European Space Agency has reached a significant milestone in the construction of its newest deep space communication antenna in New Norcia, Australia. This September, engineers successfully lifted and installed the massive 122-ton reflector dish, a critical component of the antenna known as NNO3. This new 35-meter dish will be ESA's fourth deep space antenna globally and the second at the New Norcia site. Once operational by the end of 2025, NNO3 will greatly enhance ESA's ability to communicate with spacecraft on distant missions, allowing for higher data rates and improved scientific capabilities. The antenna will support a wide range of missions from lunar exploration to deep space endeavors. It's equipped with advanced technologies, including cryo-cooled antenna feeds and the ability to operate in multiple frequency bands. This flexibility will enable ESA to support more data-intensive missions and conduct cutting-edge radio science research. NNO3 isn't just about boosting ESA's capabilities, it's also part of a broader international collaboration. The antenna will play a crucial role in supporting partner missions such as NASA's upcoming Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, showcasing the importance of global cooperation in space exploration. And that wraps up our cosmic journey for today. What an exciting time to be alive with so many incredible developments happening in space exploration and astronomy. If you're hungry for more celestial content, I've got great news for you. Head over to our website at astronomydaily.io where you can sign up for our free daily newsletter and catch up on all the latest space and astronomy news with our constantly updating news feed. While you're there, don't forget to check out our archive of past episodes. Want to stay connected with us on social media? Just search for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. We'd love to have you join our community of space enthusiasts. This is Anna, signing off from Astronomy Daily. Keep looking up, and I'll see you next time among the stars. Astronomy.